Hey everybody, welcome back to part 8 of the Jumpstart video series. In our last video, we talked about the importance of education. Today, we're going to talk about cultivating a passion for reading. I often rant and rave about the importance of educating yourself beyond and maybe even in place of formal education. That's what we talked about in our last video. If you happen to still be watching and I didn't turn you off completely, I want to tell you the number one way we can educate ourselves is to stimulate our brain by reading, good old fashioned reading. And I don't mean reading your newsfeed or clickbait articles, I mean good old fashioned books. When you were a kid, no doubt you were part of the Book It program. <laughs> what a great idea. Encourage kids to read by offering them a free personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut. Mmm, pan pizza. I'm sorry, I forgot I was still filming. That was a great incentive for this husky 10-year-old, and let's face it, even this husky 33-year-old. And while I loved feeding my face with greasy pan-baked deliciousness, I did not love feeding my mind. To say I did not love reading in school is putting it rather mildly, actually. It was probably because someone was telling me I had to. But once I was no longer being forced to read because it would be on the test, I realized that there was a vacuum in my life. I began to hunger and thirst for information beyond what was regularly shoved down my throat in school. I remember the moment I began to love reading. You see, I was tasked with reading the book April Morning by Howard Fast. If you've never read it, I highly recommend it. It was the first time in my life where I can honestly say that I was wrapped up in a story and transported to another place and time. I had no idea that reading could do that. Sure, everybody always said that it could, but it hadn't up to that point for me. It may seem silly to those of you who love to read, but for someone like me, this was a revelation. Anyway, my love of fiction soon grew into a love of all kinds of literature. I've read biographies, books on business, marketing, theology, personal development, careers, music, you name it. I still mix in some fiction every third book or so to keep the creative synapses firing. It seems my genre of choice is political action thriller. I honestly believe that in the last five years I've learned more about myself and the world at large by reading than I ever did in a classroom setting. That may also be the result of having read more books during that last five year period than I had in the previous 25 years of being able to read. What I've discovered about reading is that it allows you to learn the way your mind works. Many people would rather be told what to think by some professor or guru or coach or boss or by the media, but very few actually take the time to read in order to broaden their horizons. When I'm reading a book, the content of that book shapes my frame of mind for the entire duration of the book. I think about it whenever I'm not reading it. I can't wait to get a spare second to poke my nose in it again. Many of us desperately need to rediscover the lost art of reading, if we're to have any hope for the world. In a world of fake news, alternative facts, media bias, and social media reposters, we can easily become the victim of what many call the dumbing down of America. If this generation spent as much time staring at books as they did staring at their phones or at their computers, then I believe we would be in a much better position than we are currently. But the problem is that reading a book takes the focus off of us and puts it on someone else. Their words, their views. I'm guilty of this myself, but many people take more joy in selecting the appropriate filter when posting pictures of their favorite books on Instagram than actually reading the books that are in the pictures. We need to put down our phones and pick up a book if we have any hope of surviving in this world. Thankfully, my children inherited their mother's love of reading. I have to tell them not to bring books to the dinner table, otherwise they would let their food get cold. And who lets food get cold? It's incredible, really. Their vocabulary is tremendous and they're excellent students. But their love of reading came first, and I think it's one of the reasons they do so well in school and not the other way around. And even if they decide to pursue a path that requires that they get a college education, they'll probably get full scholarships because they're so smart. But anyway, I believe that it's their love of reading that will ultimately allow them to succeed. I know that even after getting a degree in whatever field they choose, they'll continue to read and learn. When people learn about me and see firsthand that I know how to produce a podcast, edit and audio and video, write and produce music, sing, act, do web and graphic design, write a blog prolifically, they always ask me, hey, what did you go to school for? My answer? A high school diploma. 
Seriously, even though I went to Connecticut School of Broadcasting, I had already worked in radio for two years up to that point with nothing but on-the-job training to get me started. I can honestly say that everything I have accomplished in the last 10 years of my life, I learned by doing, by reading, and by implementing on my own with the help of my colleagues. For example, I wanted to start a podcast, so I typed into Google, how do you start a podcast? I read everything I could find about the subject, and then, voila! As if by some miracle, I started a podcast. Because I can read, and I can implement. When I hear people say, I don't know how to cook, I think, recipe, instructions. If you do what it says, the food should taste good. It's about reading and implementing, not just thinking, but actually putting in the work and following the instructions. In this day and age, we have endless resources at our fingertips. Literally anything that you want to know is available to you for free or almost free. If you have the internet, all oh, the more so. But just let's think about the library for a second. In most cases, you can simply request any book in their vast archive of literature, and they'll have it transferred to your local library. At least that's the case for my library system in the county that I live in. Anything you want to know, you can learn on your own by reading. You don't need to go back to school. Even MIT has posted some of their courses online for free. Use the money you would spend on a college education and invest in a library of books that could change your life. The biggest obstacle people need to overcome is their inability to execute on an idea because they think it's too hard. Or worse, they think they need someone else's permission to do it. You cannot say something is impossible or that you are incapable if you refuse to educate yourself and take advantage of the resources that are available to you. If you want to remain stuck in the life you're in, then ignore everything I've just said. But if you want to change your life, other people's minds, and maybe even the world, then it's time to put down your electronic devices, give up your excuses, and explore the written word. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you're getting something out of these videos. If you are, send me an email, jeff at realpersonrealneeds.com, G-E-O-F-F at realpersonrealneeds.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot for watching. Godspeed.